Something terrible is about to happen. Uh, what do you want me to do about it? You're the Master Chief. Not anymore. I got news for you. You never were. Howdy all, I'm Adam the Renaissance Nerd, and welcome back to my reviews of Halo Season 2. This is boring. It's not just bad, it's boring. Literally, we go through 45 to an hour, 45 minutes to an hour in each one of these episodes, and literally nothing happens. And when something does happen, it's usually detrimental to the character that should be John 117, the Master Chief. Instead, we call him John because he isn't the Master Chief. We're going to endeavor to get through this one today as quickly as possible because literally nothing happened. It's a lot of terrible character development about characters we don't care about. And when John is there, it's forced recognition that John and Cortana are having conversations that they should have been having forever. That's kind of the, that's the sin of this episode. Towards the end, where Cortana comes back into play, it's as though, oh, wow, John and Cortana, they've had this relationship forever. How Look how easy they talk to each other. W where did that happen in season one? Season one was all about distrust and I don't want you in my head and shit like that. Now it's suddenly, hey, we're buddy, buddy, Cortana, I'm so glad you're here. It's as though they're trying to pretend that they've been actually telling a Halo story. I know, radical idea, huh? Just tell the story of Halo. But no, no, we're gonna still have more bullshit that doesn't matter with characters that have been engineered to be important when they're not important and they should have any should not have any relevance to anything we're watching. It's a disaster. All right, let's do it. It's episode six, huzzah. Flight Command, this is Javelin 4. I'm the last one left. Preparing to spike. Stand by to connect. If you've been wondering if you've had enough girl bossing in your television and entertainment, well, don't worry. Halo is here to solve that problem for you. Episode 6 is filled to the max with girl bosses yelling at other girl bosses and girl bosses in training getting trained to be better girl bosses. It's, if you're confused, don't worry. I'll make it clear as we go through this. We begin this atrocity of an episode with... Uh, What's her name? Corporal Perez. From now on, she is Girl Boss in Training Perez. Because Girl Boss in Training Perez is training to be a Girl Boss Spartan wannabe. Yes, Spartan wannabe. They're running her, some other Girl Bosses, and some beta males who are taking order orders from the Girl Bosses through a training program that's going to turn them into Spartans without actually going through the Spartan program. Because they're fodder. And we're going to find out about that in a minute. Girl Boss Perez in Training... Girl boss, tra girl boss training and training Perez. She is part of this team. They're launching themselves at a simulated Covenant warship because girl boss trainer Kai, as we'll explain to them in a moment, that in order to beat a Covenant ship, we can't go at them ship to ship because of superior shieldings. But they have a hard time shooting down little individual people flying through the air at them. I know, isn't that exciting? They get on the ship. The whole training exercise goes terrible because they're trying to get this computer virus, I guess it is, the spike into the control hub of the ship and turn the whole ship's sensors and programs on itself so it explodes. They can't seem to do it right because the, the program cheats and then Girl Boss and Training Perez is going to complain about how it cheats. They all suck. And Kai tries to give them instruction on how to be better Hive-minded bees. Work as a unit. Be better. Don't just rush in there and this and that. It's it's a lot of retarded bullshit. Girl Boss Perez in training Perez, though, is not happy. She goes out into the hallway to yell at Kai, trainer of girl bosses. I'm I, we we should be doing this better. The game cheated. It, the program cheated. It killed me after I accomplished everything. Kai responds, but everybody died. You didn't win anything. You all you're all dead. But we should we should have the real experience, because I had that real experience on Reach. Just because Kai responds, just because you were in one battle doesn't make you a veteran. But I was there. I saw death. Don't worry. I see death, too. They have a mini girl boss off in the hallway, and Kai has to put her in her place. Meanwhile, 
in some little conference room. Admiral Girl Boss and Mo Mo and Neckman have a nice little conversation about training the wannabe Spartans, about using their motivation to make more Spartans this and that because they have to use the, the imagery, the legacy, the legend of Master Chief to inspire them to die in the millions for the cause. That's right. These Spartan wannabes are not actually Spartans. They are merely fodder to be thrown at continually the Covenant fleet. At the end of this conversation, though, they're a little worried because Admiral Girl Boss is saying to Molly Molly Neckman, are we sure that John is dead? Oh, he's dead. He'd have to be dead. There's no way they got out of reach. But we just saw Halsey and someone matching John's description get on a ship that has penetrated our defensive line and landed on the planet. It's impossible. He's not alive. Well, he probably is. Because there he is, looking at them through binoculars. <sighs> we now begin the episode proper. Having recovered from her girl boss off in the hallway, girl boss and trainer, girl boss, girl boss trainer Kai is trying to relive the, uh, the, the, the fall of Reach because she wasn't there. She has guilt that she wasn't there. Molly Molly Neckman's going to come in, tells her to stop fighting so hard. You need to relax. But I couldn't sleep. I had to burn off this stress. We get in this whole retarded conversation about how we should have been there. Oh, there's nothing we could have done. Don't worry. You have to train these people to be the next best thing. But the program isn't working. Don't worry. Even if it doesn't work, it's giving them hope. Hope that they can they can fight this war and win this war. Molly Molly Neckman is just constantly lying through his teeth. And we should be feeling some sort of emotional connection to Kai that she has mistakenly sold her soul to these people for the greater good but unfortunately we don't care about kai she's a flat boring character she's the only remaining member of silver team that has survived this point and i'm just waiting for the moment when she's gonna die or have to step aside so that we don't have to deal with her anymore because even these morons who write this show must realize she is an uninteresting character and we have to jettison that to try and get more screen time for the master chief oh i'm sorry John, meanwhile, is talking with Soren on the ship along with... Uh, meanwhile, back on the ship that has landed on the planet, housing Halsey, Soren, Soren's wife, John, and Quan. I'm going to get this one out of the way real quick. Soren and his wife have a quick little stupid conversation with Halsey about don't let her manipulate us. Oh, I'm not going to manipulate you. Blah, blah, doesn't matter. Soren and his wife, they're going to go off to find their kid. That's it. We're done. We see them one more time. They're, 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 what they do in this episode, all is supposed to tell you they're training his kid to be a new Spartan. That's all you need to know. We're done with their boring ass, pointless, useless shit. Meanwhile, John spots Quan getting attacked by troops because Quan wandered off on her own while having a vision about hippie old chick from the first episode leading her around. Now, when Quan spots a bunch of soldiers off in the distance, she's a good hundred yards away and they haven't spotted her yet. Yet somehow we cut back and she's being shot at. Makes no sense, but don't worry, just consume. Quan gets saved by John, who comes in and makes short work of these guys because they are paper people to him. Yes, you got some Master Chief action, but he's fighting other humans, and he's just tossing them around like they're nothing. Quan, meanwhile, takes this moment to escape. While Master Chief purposefully gets captured, she makes her way to a well, which is similar to the one she saw in Magdragal, where somebody was talking to Guilty Spark, or maybe it wasn't Guilty Spark. Doesn't matter. Talk to a spark. She decides to jump down the well because she hears the people coming, and stupid hallucination of old hippie lady tells her to do it with emotion, so she jumps down the well, and I really hoped for a second that she was going to die. But no, this is Quan, who has the biggest, thickest plot armor you've ever seen because they want her to be the most important thing, the girl that is the key to everything. She is going to lead John to the halo. She's so important because she has a 
she has a destiny because of the her, she's a guardian, a protector of the halo and the secrets of the halo. Do you understand how important Quan is? Because now she is a full fledged girl boss, and as she reaches the bottom of the well, there's Halsey who effed off and got down there too. Because apparently Halsey used to work down here. This is where she started her early work on the Spartan program. So after Halsey and Quan walk through some halls, having girl boss off, because that's what it is, girl boss off, because Quan is a full fledged girl boss, as I said. And Halsey, she's a veteran girl boss. She knows her way around girl bossing better than a newbie girl boss like Quan does. So they go back and forth. Are you expecting me to apologize? No, I don't expect you to apologize. Well, I'm I'm mad at you because you, you ruined John. He was so obedient before. Well, I'm sorry I ruined him. Sorry about that. Well, maybe you shouldn't be because even though you're an insignificant part of the equation, you breeded something interesting. You bred something interesting in John now that he has evolved a little bit. So maybe it is where he's saying, girl boss, girl boss, blah, blah, blah. They're going to walk through halls. We'll get back to them later. If you think I'm going through this quickly, I am. Because this is boring. And that's essentially what it's happening. You're having interactions between characters that suck. Basically, and this happened here, and they had this conversation here, and they walked over here and had another conversation. They walked down some halls, had more conversations. They sat in these chairs and had more conversations. That's what's happening. You're getting character development over characters that are worthless and pointless that have significance being forced upon us, even though they shouldn't in a Halo story. Okay, moving on. We return to the... Arbiter's flagship for some reason as he's causing himself some pain for his shame, I guess. We're, we're going to go through a whole sequence now where some priest wants to communicate with uh, high charity, but uh, the Arbiter has shut off communications. Priest wants to kill Girl Boss McKee because she's not producing any progress on anything whatsoever, and she's just another human to him. Arbiter defends her, whatever. We... It's, it's all about keeping McKee alive. She's got as big plot armor as Quan does. We, this also, we can have another girl boss off between McKee and Cortana about trust, not trust. You're lying to them. Where you, are you having problems? Why don't you give me control? No, I don't trust you to give you control, blah, blah, blah. It's really annoying. It's really stupid. And it's a waste of fucking time because there's only one person Cortana should be building a relationship with, and that's John 117, the Master Chief. Problem is, in this version, she has no real relationship with John. We're going to get back to that. Back on the base, girl boss in training, Perez and her squad are going through another training simulation where suddenly she has the inspiration to try and level up her girl bossicity. I know that isn't a word, but just won't walk with me here. She decides to talk back to the other girl boss supposed to be in charge of the squad saying we have to think outside the box we can't do the normal stuff to win and they do and some of them survive to complete the simulation although when they're trying to exfiltrate there's no resistance which causes her a moment later to go out in the hall and have another girl boss off with kai girl boss trainer so that she can complain it was too easy kai tells her hey take the win girl boss in training and then she walks off because that's leading up. So now Kai can later on have another pointless conversation with more than willing neck man. Oh, but Adam, it's all about her learning to doubt him. Well, there are better ways that could have done it. Just like there are better ways they could have used John in this episode. I wouldn't. Remember I told you John let himself get captured? Well, here he is. He's been captured. Bunch of soldiers having him on hooks and lines. Said he can't escape. Keeping him in a distance. Nice and nice and tight. He's going to get briefly interrogated by lesbian chick that we got from a few episodes ago. Lesbian commander chick. She's going to yell at him. He's going to talk down to her. He tells her, tell Petrovsky, that's Admiral Girlboss, I'm coming after her. And when I'm done with her, I'll get Ackers into that kind of shit. She leaves like, yeah, I'll tell him that. She, she, she tries to be all girl boss on him, but he successfully deflects her girl boss attacks. As she leaves and the dudes start to carefully hook him into the ground, he watches and waits for the moment and then proceeds to just destroy them all. Nice little fight scene, but it's humans. It's boring. We then watch him as he gets a look at the camera. We zoom out and Kai and Molly Molly Neck Man were watching. Or at least watching a recording of it now that he know, knowing that John is now loose in the base. 
we now begin this long, drawn-out affair of Molly Molly Neckman trying to convince Kai that John only escaped Reach because he's in cahoots with girl boss McKee and is now working for the Covenant. They spend a long time trying to have him convince Kai of this. And for the moment, she's convinced because she runs off to go stop uh, John from accessing anything deeper in the complex. whole bunch of other things happen I've already kind of mentioned. Uh, like I said, Soren and his wife looking for a kid, whatever. What matters right now, this is two of the most important moments in this episode in terms of the destruction of Master Chief. Uh, John is looking through a map, and here comes Kai into the map room, wherever the hell it is, server room, doesn't matter. Here's what goes down here now. This is supposed to be the moment where John convinces Kai that she's more than just a soldier who follows orders, that she has to start thinking for herself. When if we remember last season, Kai was the one who started thinking for herself before John started thinking for himself. So it's, it's as though the writers of this season didn't bother to read the crap they wrote last season. And remember that she's already a pretty good individual thinker, that she's capable of making her own choices. But no, no, she's following orders. She thinks he's a traitor, and she begins to question him about how he escaped this and that. He reveals to her that Ackerson, Molly Molly Neck Man, left them without their armor, Vanek is dead, Reese is retired, and all that jazz, and they're all that's left. Now, how do you think this would be a good way to have this conversation go down, these revelations happen? Do you think it would be interesting if they had a real conversation with real good acting, real emoting? No. Let's just have Kai, with her armor on, beat the shit out of John for about five minutes. And have him be a bloody pulp trying to convince her of all these things. Telling her, you don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. I know you don't want to do this. But I can't do this. But I have to do this. But it's okay you have to do this because I know you don't want to do this. That's the essentially, that's essentially what goes on here. Also, that we can have Kai, girl boss Spartan, beat the shit out of the Master Chief. That's what this is. Now, you would think... The Master Chief's goal in all this was to find his armor so he could put it on and be a badass. Nope, nope. He, he kind of loses the will to go on after this. Once more, jumping ahead, because I already referred to a bunch of other things. If you're watching the actual episode, you'll notice I'm skipping things because I've already referred to them. We now understand why Cortana let McKee get her. Apparently, it was all a ruse. It was all so that she could hack into the Covenant mainframe, the Covenant network, and feed information to Admiral Girlboss. Plain and simple. Admiral Girlboss sent Cortana in, and that's, that was their deal, and she's supposed to stay there and communicate. Here's the thing, though. Cortana is now thinking for herself. Obviously, she's now worked out a deal with McKee. Remember I mentioned earlier, McKee was questioning things. She's upset that she can't, con she can't interact with the artifact anymore. She needs John to interact with the artifact and find the halo. Cortana apparently struck up a deal with McKee, letting her hit, use the, trans, the, the, the transmission network so that she could connect with Admiral Girlboss. But while doing so, she also talks with John. And here's what I said. This is the second part. First, we had to have Master Chief John Wannabe be beat up by a girl. Now, we have to have the fake relationship between John and Cortana. That, to me, is the biggest atrocity in this episode. That they are having John and Cortana have a back and forth as though they've been hanging out forever. That they have this deep and meaningful relationship that the real Master Chief and Cortana have. It's not, it, they had no buildup for this. There's no foundation for this. So when they have this talk back and forth, oh, well, how, how are you here? Well, of course I remember you. Oh, no, no. Oh, I always knew you could do this. I didn't know you could do that. Oh, I'm here for you, John. You're the master chief. You can do all this shit. Having that happen, it's soulless. It's empty. It's meaningless. And it sucks. And then she manipulate, manipulates him into getting back on his feet after he just wants to lie there and die when she says, I know where McKee is. I know where the Arbiter is. The Arbiter who killed Vanek. That gets him back on his feet. Now he's going to go touch the artifact. Instead of going to get his armor first, 
The first thing they should have done was get his armor. You could have had this whole little last bit of the adventure in the, in the episode of Master Chief fighting his way with Cortana helping him out to get his armor and put on his armor on and put on the helmet and have Cortana and the Master Chief talking and at least having it look like it's a Halo adventure with the Chief with the helmet on and the Cortana in his ear thinking, all right, it kind of feels like Halo now, but no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. They go through the hallway, she unlocks things as he gets to the artifact. Meanwhile, back on uh, the Covenant ship, McKee and the Arbiter have a little rebellion against the priest. A whole bunch of fight breaks out. At the same time, Kai has a big old conversation with Moly Moly Neckman about betrayal. About how she's figured it out thanks to John that he's betrayed everybody. That they, that they left reach to the wolves. Although now she's gonna, she wants to help John, but too late. Here come the attack forces to go after John. So she runs off to help him. That's all you need to know from that. John, instead of going to get his armor, as I said, goes to get the artifact. And just as he's about to touch it, just as McKee is about to touch it, and they're going to interact and probably be transported to the Halo again like they were for season one, episode over. That's a fun cliffhanger, isn't it? No, it's bullshit and it's boring. But we're done with this episode, thank God. doing this i have a lot of capabilities did you forget no i don't remember and there you have it episode six in the books episode seven and eight two episodes left we know the final episode is titled halo so they may just make it to the halo in this season of course what's going to happen there who knows all i know is this this show hates the source material and they kind of mock it when they have John and Cortana having this buddy-buddy conversation type exchange as they do shit that they normally would do together, but there's no foundation, no groundwork, no soul to any of this. This is why this show is terrible. It pretends, it plays at being Halo. It talks about respecting the source material, yet ignoring the source material. It pretends to give a shit, but it doesn't. When was the last time we saw John put on his armor? It's been five episodes. We haven't seen the Master Chief anywhere. We see other people doing shit. We are constantly have characters who don't matter whining and complaining about shit. Girl boss talking, girl boss sitting, girl boss commanding, all kinds of girl boss conversations everywhere. But no actual story progression. It just goes from here to here to here to here with bad editing and bad dialogue and characters who are worthless. We do not care about Quan. We do not care about the fact I left this out, I'm sorry, that Halsey finds Miranda at the bottom of the well. Nobody cares about this shit because these characters who are real characters like Halsey and Miranda, they have been abused. They have been inserted into this show in a horrible, annoying, terrible way, being turned into girl bosses who have no respect for each other and no respect for anybody else and no respect for the story. This show is terrible. It's only going to get worse. And I will be surprised if they give a season three. I really hope it's canceled because then somebody's going to cry and I'm going to laugh. Either way, we are done for another week. Thank you for watching this review. Hit the like button, subscribe to this channel, and I will see you guys next time. Until then, take it easy. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you'd like to reach out to me, please email me at therandnerd at gmail.com for all channel business purposes. I am on Twitter now, mostly for promotion and sharing of videos, maybe a little shit stirring here and there. Who knows? At the Ren Nerd. You can also find me at the Geeks and Gamers forums under at ROAS, and you can see me on Rumble and Odyssey under the Renaissance Nerd. Thanks again for watching. Take it easy.